Hello, this is Brett Etheridge, founder of Dominate the GMAT, here with your GMAT tip of the week. The tip for this week is what we call the solvability rule. And the solvability rule simply says this, that in order for an equation to be solvable, you must have as many distinct variables as you have equations if those equations are to be solved. In other words, one equation, one variable, you can solve it. For example, if we have an equation like 3x equals 15, I can solve that because I only have one variable and I have one equation. And even if I didn't know how to do it, a Harvard professor with a calculator could figure out what x is. If I have two variables to solve for, I must have at least two equations to solve for those two variables. I can't say 3x equals 5, 15, y, and somehow be able to figure out what both x and y are. There's an infinite number of combinations of x and y that would satisfy that equation. However, if I now give you a second equation, for example, 10x equals negative 2y, now I have two separate equations. I can solve those two variables. We call those simultaneous equations. And of course, if you have three variables, you will need three equations to solve for those three variables. Now, this is especially important and useful on data sufficiency, because oftentimes on data sufficiency, we're asked to determine whether or not we have enough information, whether or not we have solvability for an equation. Take a look at this example. Go ahead and press pause if you want, but here we have an example taken from the GMAT Review Official Guide. See how you do with this. But hopefully, here's what you notice, right? We are asked to identify or solve for a variable, in this case, P, right? P equals what? How many tickets did Paula sell? Well, what information are we given? Well, here's the interesting thing, right? We have two variables, don't we? We have the S, how many Sally sold, and we have P, how many Paula sold. And so we're going to need to make sure that we have two equations if we're going to solve for those two variables. Does that make sense? And so are we given those two equations? Well, notice what we're given in the question stem itself. The question stem itself is itself an equation, right? It tells us that Sally plus Paula, so S plus P, will have sold 100 tickets. That's helpful. That's one of our equations. So now, how are we going to be able to know we can solve for one of the variables P? Well, when we evaluate the statements, do the statements give us a second equation containing both variables? If the answer is yes, then it is solvable. Again, you don't actually have to then go and solve it. You just have to know that it is solvable. And what does statement one give us? We'll take a look here again. Statement number one tells us that Sandy sold two-thirds as many raffle tickets as Paula. By my looking at that, that means that S equals two-thirds of P. That's essentially the equation. Now, I don't care what you do with that. You don't have to do anything with that. All you need to do is recognize the solvability rule I just taught you. That S equals two-thirds P, and here S plus P equals 100. If you knew how to do simultaneous equations, which, by the way, you need to know how to do for the problem-solving section, but on data sufficiency, we don't care what P is. We just need to know that we've been given enough information to actually solve that. So hopefully that makes sense. And then, of course, you can go over to your answer choices. And once you've made the determination that statement one is sufficient, we can eliminate B, C, and E as per our rules of data sufficiency, eliminating answer choices, and then we would simply have to evaluate statement number two, which you will see is impossible to solve because we don't even know how the total number of tickets that were sold. The answer, of course, is A. But the solvability rule should help you really across the board on the GMAT, but especially in determining sufficiency on data sufficiency. So with this, review your rules of data sufficiency if you need to. Certainly learn how to do simultaneous equations for the problem solving section, but hopefully the solvability rule will help you to go out and dominate the GMAT.